On today's episode, we will explore the hidden history of enslaved woman, Isabella Pinckney. There is not much history and information about Isabella Pinckney. My research began on a trip to the McLeod Plantation in Charleston, South Carolina. Hearing about her and her story inspired me to want to share it with you. Hopefully, as more people start talking about her, more information will become available about her life in the future. Prior to the tour, I viewed the company's website and read the names of the enslaved. I made sure to notate and ask questions about one name that stood out. I was surprised to learn about his connection to Isabella Pinckney. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified of new video uploads. Born in 1828, Isabella Pinckney was a product of an unknown white plantation owner and an enslaved woman. Biracial children during slavery were often the outcome of forced relationships between owners and their enslaved women. Born to slavery and serving as a slave herself until she was emancipated, it is unclear if she was bought or if she was given to Mr. William McLeod by a neighbor and a friend, another plantation owner. Mr. McLeod had lost his first wife in childbirth and his second wife to illness, leaving him with a young daughter by the name of Annie. Isabella Pinckney was charged or assigned to raise and be a companion and nanny to young Annie, who was age six. Around 1848, her son, Daniel McLeod, was born. Yes, Daniel McLeod. His name stood out on the list of the enslaved. Isabella would have been around the age of 20. Mr. McLeod allowed for Daniel and Isabella to live on the third floor in the big house. Because of Daniel's lighter skin complexion, he was able to go to school and obtain a proper education. Two years after the Civil War erupted in 1861, the McLeod family was forced off their land by the Confederate soldiers who occupied their home. It is not clear how long Isabella continued to care for Annie until she was permitted to leave the plantation after the Civil War and emancipation of slaves in South Carolina. Isabella was finally able to pursue her own interest in life and she became an entrepreneur as a landlord in the 1870s. Isabella was such an integral figure in young Annie's life that on Annie's deathbed in 1935, she called for her long deceased nanny, Isabella. Daniel, Isabella and Williams McLeod's son, became a doctor. Do you agree with our findings? If not, do your own research and please share it in the comments below. I am very interested to see if anyone can gather more information about Isabella, Annie, or Daniel McLeod. Be sure to hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching.